Welcome back to Module 4 of our Payments Industry Masterclass. In this session, we're diving into the world of international payments and looking at the systems that make cross-border transactions possible. In this lecture, we'll be exploring SWIFT and correspondent banking, two of the most important mechanisms for global money transfers. By the end of this session, you'll have a solid understanding of how international payments flow, the role SWIFT plays, and how correspondent banking networks facilitate global commerce. Part 1. What is SWIFT? Let's start with SWIFT, which stands for Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. SWIFT is a messaging network that enables banks around the world to securely exchange payment instructions. Think of SWIFT as the postal system for financial messages. It doesn't actually handle the transfer of money itself, but it sends the messages that trigger the transfer. Key features of SWIFT. Global Reach SWIFT connects over 11,000 financial institutions across more than 200 countries. Standardized messages. SWIFT provides standardized message formats that allow banks to send payment instructions securely and consistently. Security. SWIFT is known for its high security standards, using encryption and secure protocols to protect sensitive financial information. Real-time messaging. SWIFT allows for near instantaneous communication between financial institutions, making it a cornerstone of the global payments infrastructure. Part 2. How SWIFT works. SWIFT enables payments between banks by sending standardized, encrypted messages between institutions. Here's how the process works. Initiation. The sender's bank, let's call it Bank A, sends a SWIFT message to the recipient's bank, Bank B. This message contains all the relevant payment details, including the amount, the payer's and payee's information, and any relevant transaction codes. Message transfer. The SWIFT network securely transfers the message to the recipient's bank, where it is decrypted and processed. Payment processing. Bank B checks the information, confirms the availability of funds or credit, and proceeds to settle the payment. Confirmation. Once the payment is processed, the recipient's bank sends a confirmation message to the sender's bank via SWIFT. This entire process, while secure, can still take one to three business days, depending on various factors such as the bank's internal processing times and time zones. Part 3. What is correspondent banking? In the world of international payments, correspondent banking refers to a relationship between two banks, often in different countries, that allows them to process payments on behalf of each other. Why is this necessary? Not all banks have direct relationships with foreign banks. This is where correspondent banking steps in. In a correspondent banking arrangement, one bank, the correspondent bank, holds an account with another bank, the respondent bank, allowing the correspondent bank to facilitate payments between parties in different countries. For example, if a bank in the US wants to send a payment to a bank in Nigeria, but the two banks don't have a direct relationship, they can use an intermediary bank, the correspondent bank, to facilitate the transaction. Key features of correspondent banking. Interbank relationships. Correspondent banking involves a network of interbank relationships that facilitate cross-border payments. Foreign currency. Correspondent banks often hold foreign currency accounts, allowing them to settle payments in different currencies. Swift messaging. Correspondent banks typically use SWIFT for sending secure payment instructions between banks. Part 4. How correspondent banking works. Let's look at an example of how correspondent banking operates in the context of an international wire transfer. Initiation, a customer at Bank A in the US, wants to send $1,000 to a customer at Bank B in France. Using the correspondent bank, Bank A doesn't have a direct relationship with Bank B, so it sends the payment through an intermediary, a correspondent bank in France, say Bank C. Swift messaging. Bank A sends a swift message to Bank C, the correspondent bank, with payment details. The message is securely transferred and Bank C passes it along to Bank B. Settlement. Bank B credits the recipient's account and Bank C settles the funds with Bank A. Confirmation. All parties involved receive confirmation once the payment is completed. While correspondent banking enables global payments, it can also be slow, expensive and subject to additional fees from intermediary banks. The complexity of this system has spurred the rise of alternative payment methods like blockchain technology, which we'll cover in later sessions. Part 5. Challenges with SWIFT and correspondent banking. 
While SWIFT and correspondent banking have been crucial in facilitating international payments, there are several challenges that come with using these systems. Fees. Both SWIFT and correspondent banks charge fees for their services, which can make international transfers expensive for businesses and consumers alike. The fees vary depending on the amount being transferred, the countries involved and the intermediary banks. Speed. While SWIFT is a fast messaging network, international transfers can still take several days due to the processing time of the banks involved. This is a major drawback for businesses or individuals who need to move funds quickly. Lack of transparency. In many cases, it can be difficult for the sender and receiver to know exactly what the fees will be and what the total cost of the transaction will be, especially when multiple intermediary banks are involved. Compliance. Both SWIFT and correspondent banking are subject to strict regulatory and compliance requirements, especially when it comes to anti-money laundering, AML, and combating the financing of terrorism, CFT. This can make international payments complex and slow. Part 6. The future of SWIFT and correspondent banking. While SWIFT and correspondent banking remain essential for cross-border payments, new technologies and models are emerging to disrupt the traditional system. Blockchain and cryptocurrency. Blockchain-based systems like Ripple and Stellar are offering alternatives to SWIFT by enabling direct peer-to-peer -peer transfers without the need for intermediary banks. Real-time payment networks. Countries around the world are implementing real-time payment systems that can bypass traditional correspondent banking models. For example, the Clearinghouse's RTP network in the US allows for faster, more affordable transfers. Central Bank Digital Currencies, CBDCs. Several countries, including China and the EU, are exploring CBDCs to enable faster, secure and low-cost international payments. Conclusion. SWIFT and correspondent banking have been fundamental in driving global commerce by facilitating international payments for decades. While these systems are essential for moving money across borders, they are not without their limitations. As we move towards a digital first world, alternative technologies like blockchain and real-time payments are beginning to challenge the traditional models. Thanks for joining me today, and I look forward to seeing you in the next chapter.